Now, two really significant things have happened to the FK8 Honda Civic Type R of late. Firstly, it's received a host of performance upgrades to make this award-winning hot hatchback even sharper. Secondly, the Type R family has actually grown, with the new Sportline car being introduced as a more road bias, wingless version of the Type R hot hatchback. And then there's this, the new limited edition, one of just 20 cars in the UK or 700 globally. We got the keys today to find out what makes this the pointed tip of the Type R spear. This limited edition car is as visually arresting as the Type R ever has been, with that really aggressive splitter, various ducts and channels to scoop and manipulate air to the car's will. You'll also find the obligatory red trimmed skirting to help maintain the airflow down the side of the car, aggressive rear diffuser with triple tailpipe, and of course that huge bowed rear wing at the rear. Now this whole package isn't just for show, it generates real downforce. And by that, I mean not just enough to cancel out the car's own lift at speed. I mean, it generates actual downforce, which is something that a lot of hot hatchbacks don't actually do. Limited edition cars can be picked out from lesser models via their unique sunlight yellow paint, contrasting roof and door mirrors, forged lightweight 20 inch BBS alloy wheels, of which are wrapped in sticky Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. The interior retains much of the architecture of the regular cars with a tiered dashboard and carbon fiber inlays. It retains those excellent body hugging Type R Alcantara seats with ample bolstering suggesting this car is begging for some track use. But there is a fresh steering wheel upholstered in Alcantara. Technology is conspicuous by its absence, with the touchscreen infotainment system being totally missing, along with much of the car's sound deadening. This crash diet, in combination with those forged alloy wheels, results in a 47 kilogram weight saving. But while this car's heart might live at the racetrack, it still has to do the day-to-day, -day, and that means it'll seat two adults comfortably in the back. The boot has 420 litres at your disposal. But that's the beauty of a true hot hatchback, because it somewhat allows you to have your cake and eat it too. Because after you've dropped the kids to school or done your local run to the supermarket, you can hit the track on a sunny day or your favourite B-road and have the most grin-inducing opportunities. You'll have to excuse the slightly dishevelled state of my hair. I've been wearing a race helmet just before coming on camera. And that's because we've been testing out almost every generation of Honda Civic Type R out here on circuit. And the reason I've been doing that before getting into this limited edition is so I can tell you whether these changes really add up to anything. So first of all, the two litre turbocharged VTEC engine, that's unchanged. 316 brake horsepower and 295 pounds feet of torque, or 306 brake horsepower if you're in America. 0 to 62, again, that's the same, 5.7 seconds, and the top speed remains the same, impressive, 169 miles per hour. Now, the key changes under, under the skin with this car are to be found in the suspension setup, those sticky cup tires, and the 47 kilos of weight that's been shifted, 2.5 kilos of which on each corner from those new BBS forged alloy wheels. And I have to say, the change was immediately apparent when I became very aware there was a sharp corner approaching. Hitting those big 350 millimeter cross-drilled ventilated disc brakes delivered a much more immediate response than I was first expecting. That's partly because the brakes have been made more resilient in the facelifted car, but also there's less weight in this car to stop, so you can actually brake later out on circuit. Next, initial turn in, just as responsive as I was expecting, but the stickiness, the lateral grip those cup tires give you is night and day over the Continentals that you could use to have on this car. It really is impressive, and the result is far greater cornering speed in this car. Lack of weight also boosts agility. Of course, being front wheel drive and very powerful, there's still a nibble of torque steer but thanks to that limited slip differential that's working hard up front. And of course, the dual axis suspension that's unique to Honda, you find that actually it eradicates a hell of a lot of it, considering it's got 316 brake horsepower and it's dealing with lateral corners, patchy tarmac, and just getting that sheer grunt down onto the tarmac. It does a great job of translating the performance into forward momentum out of the corners as well. And something else I really love that's been applied across the whole Type R range is this new counterweighted 
gear lever. The previous one was a really nice snap, snick, snick, and had that nice big silver ball bearing on top. This one, with its teardrop shape, is just a little bit more precise. It's still that nice, really close motion, but you can change with a little bit more confidence that you're not gonna get into the wrong gear. It still retains that really great mechanical feeling to it, which makes it so rewarding to use. Enthusiasts, count your blessings that this car is a manual. Whilst this car does miss things like an infotainment system, it retains various elements like the rev matching for the gearbox, which can make the clumsiest of oafs seem like a professional racing driver, though that can be switched off if you really fancy doing the heel and tearing yourself, which I'm sure enthusiasts will really admire. But also, it retains the three selectable drive modes in the car. So the car starts up in sport, which is the natural state for any Type R. It's alert, it's responsive, it gives you good steering weighting, but you can dial things back into comfort for more everyday use, where the dampers are a little bit softer, the steering's a bit lighter, and the throttle is not as aggressive whenever you're dawdling around Tesco's, for example. Or you can go to the other end of the spectrum, dial things up to plus R mode, it applies a new torque map to the engine, which makes everything much, much punchier. I mean, the, the turbocharged torque of this VTEC engine is, is brilliant, and as much as we miss the VTEC screamers of old, this new generation is impressive in its own right. You also get stiffer dampers in this mode, weightier steering, and the throttle is at its most alert. It's great. And because it's a Honda, it means that you can take it to a racetrack like this, beat it like a drum all day long, and know you're gonna get home without any issues whatsoever. If I'm totally honest, I was a little bit skeptical of the limited edition car whenever I first read about it. Okay, it had some weight saving and some stickier tires and a bespoke suspension set up, but really how much difference was that gonna make? But jumping from the pre-facelift car into a facelift car into the limited edition car, I mean, goodness, it's like it's got a whole different focus to it. The regular Type R is still a great track machine, but this thing just has an extra element of focus to it. I just can't get over the, the added grip is probably the headline here, followed by just the improvement in braking and how much later you can leave the braking because there's, there's less inertia, there's less weight being thrown around the car. There's definitely less body roll as well. The more I drive this, the more I think it's such a shame that there's only 20 of these cars in the UK. At £39,995, the limited edition is nearly 10 grand more expensive than the regular GT. Though not that that really matters because every single one of these cars is already spoken for. This hardcore halo of the Type R family was a collector's item before it even started.